Welcome to The Wade. My name is Abraham. I'm sitting next to Wade. Thank you so much for tuning in. The Wade is designed to answer the many questions we all have. So however you're viewing this podcast on YouTube, Facebook, podcast, Spotify, share this, share this video mm. with those that you know so they can join in on the dialogue. And so we're going to jump straight in. Uh, and then I want to remind you at the end how you can send in your questions every week. Here's a question someone sent in. I want to leave enough time. They said, explain 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 35. Hmm. Uh, this is the first time Wade's hearing the question. So explain 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through it, 35. What does it say? Abe? It says, Paul writes, women should be silent during the church meetings it is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. If they have any questions, they should ask their husbands at home, for it is improper for women to speak in church meetings. We'll this answer that. <laughs> yes, we'll answer that here in a few seconds. Okay, wait. What are your thoughts on 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 35, when Paul says to the Corinthian Christians for women to be silent, to ask their husbands at home? What are your thoughts? Well, this is a hot button issue, and I just happen to be on the forefront of this within the convention that Emmanuel Enid associates with in terms of missions. Mm. And let me say, first of all, Abe, if I were to read that passage at first glance, yep. it would seem to me a woman, a follower of Jesus who happens to be female, should be silent yeah. in church and mm -hmm. not speak mm -hmm. and go home and talk to her husband. That's what it looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that would contradict every single other teaching of Jesus Christ, the apostles, and the New Testament. Okay. So we have to come to an understanding of what this verse says so that it is consistent with the flow of the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the New Covenant Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So first time I've heard the question. Yeah. Okay. Well, I looked at it a little bit yesterday. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, today, first yeah. time I've heard it. Yeah, but I've heard it. I, well, yeah, I looked right. at it. Yeah. Y you bet. Well, and, and of course, I've... I've received that question often from people who will either write me or call me and they understand my view of women. And, and by the way, if you're listening to this for what the first time. What is your time, view on women, I was going to say? Okay, here's my view. In the New Testament church, leadership in the home, in the church, even in society, mm -hmm. is based upon humble character. Mm -hmm. Not hubris, hubristic control. That means prideful control. It's based upon gifting, never okay. gender. Okay. It's, it's based upon a spirit of service, not a position of power. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20 to his disciples, he called them around and he said, listen, the Gentiles... They rule over people. They dominate and subjugate people. They have authority over people. It shall not be this way among you. The only head of Abraham Wright, the only authority over Wade Burleson and over any follower of Jesus who happens to be female is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church, Colossians chapter 1. So that's my view. Okay. Um, I, I, I want to share a few thoughts on 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 35. One is if you read the entire chapter and the letter, but if you just look at 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is establishing order. There seemed to be a lot of disorder. He says it in verse 33, and a lot of people were speaking out, so he was trying to establish order. That is crucial to the point, I can't prove this, but I think if there wasn't so much disorder, Paul would have never said this. So I think he was first addressing this because there was disorder. You see it in verse 33. A second thing is, the word woman and wife, I read in the Greek, is the same. So you have to look at the context to decide, is Paul referring to women or wives? And in verse 35, Paul says, ask your husbands at home. So if you were single, what would you do? So I think it's a fair argument to think that Paul could be addressing wives, 
that might have been speaking out. Um, but in verse 29, this, this is important because you have to look at the whole chapter. There were people prophesying, speaking out, and Paul wanted their words to be evaluated. And I think, especially in that culture, this was primarily done by men. So I think Paul was trying to establish a universal principle because he even refers to the law in verse 34. I'd love to get your thoughts on what you think that law is. I think that law is a universal principle that the head of woman is man, the head of Christ is God, and the head of man is Christ. That is actually 1 Corinthians 11.3. But the reason I don't think this is an absolute command that women should never speak is because in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5, I believe, Paul said that women should pray or prophesy with their head covered. Some believe this was an actual covering. Some believe it's their hair. Either way, I believe it was culturally sensitive in that day, a chaste woman, a, a humble, respectful woman to do that. Um, but I believe Paul is establishing order in 1 Corinthians 14, and he's using a universal principle that women in that day didn't necessarily have a problem with. They weren't educated like like well, today. Let, let me ask you this. Say. But I feel like Paul was using a universal principle that wives wouldn't have a problem with going home, asking their husbands. Everybody seemed to be chiming in. We don't know fully, but I think Paul is just saying, hey, ask your husbands at home. Okay, when you say universal principle. Yeah, okay? or law. Or law. Universal, do you mean eternal? I mean just right now in this age, this world. Okay, so it's not universal and eternal. It comes to an end. I'd have to think about that. I'm saying right now, for sure, this yeah. age that we live I'm in. I'm with you. Well, I totally disagree. Okay. Uh, and the reason I disagree is because when you talk about uh, a man being the head of a woman and Christ the head of a man, then you're, you're contradicting Colossians 1 that says Christ is the head of the church. And every person, male and female, mm -hmm. is part of the body that serves as Christ gifts them. It's, it's interesting, nowhere, nowhere are spiritual gifts rendered by gender. Okay. Uh, in other words, the gift of prophecy is never given to just a man. The okay. gift of teaching is never given to just a man. Acts 2.17 says, in the latter days, the spirit will pour out and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So I personally believe, Abe, I understand where you're coming from. I just don't believe the Bible at all teaches that. Yeah, so with prophecy, Paul said in 1 Corinthians eleven five 5 that women ought to pray or prophesy with their head covered. And this was a culturally uh, of course. respectful thing. So I, I'm not saying that women can't speak in church. I know you're I'm not, not saying they can't prophesy. I, I personally don't believe in women as senior pastors. And by the way, even Beth Moore, Joyce Meyer, who are big, huge women speakers around the world. I don't even think they support Ex being explain to me, senior pastors. Ex I understand. We're going to come back to 1 Corinthians 14. But explain to me the difference between a senior pastor and a spiritually gifted man or woman with the gift of prophecy. So what's the difference? I think a lead pastor is given the role of shepherding and speaking truth from God's word. So you don't think a person with the spiritual gift of prophecy shepherds? Yeah, Do, so you're you under don't, shepherd. You don't think that a, a, a person with a gift of prophecy speaks the word of God? Of course. Okay, then I'm asking, what's the difference between a lead pastor? Well, well see, I, there might be some ambiguity in scriptures. We may not know all the details. I think the well, scripture let me ask you this, though, is clear I understand. that I'm gonna, it is roles. I'm going to press you. It Where, is roles. I'm going to press you. Where does scripture have the role of lead pastor? Well, that's what we kind of called it. That's what we called it. Back in the Bible, they, have, they didn't have youth I pastors have no problem or children's that. pastors. I have no problem. So what you're saying is culture today in Southern Baptist circles yeah, we, we've have evolved. created a lead pastor role. I think a lot of, of the Southern Just Baptists— answer, me, answer my question. Where churches in, in general. The, where in the Bible does it say lead pastor, senior pastor? Yeah, I don't think— It doesn't. It says elders, which I think should be men. Why? Based on scripture. I think it's First Timothy 3. I don't know if it's a, I think it's a secondary issue, but I feel like biblically, and I could be wrong, I feel like elders primarily, when Paul was talking to Timothy, he was pretty much, they were to govern 
and help so, lead. So what you're saying is and, and a, a male has authority over women. No. I feel like they have authority within God's word. So anytime we speak God's word, the word has the authority, but God so when uses it says, people when it says your, to speak. When your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Yeah. A daughter is is a male or a female today? I mean, some people. Is a daughter a male or a female? Of course, she's a female. I, Does I she have say, the authority to speak God's word? To who? I said as a lead senior pastor. I don't believe so. Abraham, I received that, but my point to you is this. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that. Mm -hmm. You are adding to Scripture. Well, I just feel like Scripture is clear on Jesus selecting the disciples, even when they replaced Judas, they still chose a male. I think male leadership in the home and in the church is clear in Scripture. I think they call Abraham. it complementarian, Abraham. egalitarian. You, now, I understand. But, but I don't you believe and I are totally on. Opposite but I don't posts. believe people who are complementarian or egalitarian, whichever view. I don't believe you could say that they're not reading the Bible. And I'm not a scholar on this issue. I haven't. I didn't really study much outside of 1 Corinthians 14, so I'd have to really look. But I know there's a lot of respectful, God-fearing men oh, like yourself of course. who believe in complementary, and they're not quacks. Of they're not, of course not reading out of the Quran. Oh, of course not. They believe that's what the yeah, Scripture yeah, yeah, yeah. teaches. Oh, Abraham, listen. And we compliment each other. I, I, I believe a woman compliments a man. Okay. That's not what we're talking about. I, I don't even like the word complementarian or egalitarian because okay. they've been hijacked. It's true. That's Male true. and females complement each other. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is nowhere in Scripture are spiritual gifts gender-based. Okay, what are your thoughts on 1 Corinthians 11.3 when it says the head of woman is man, the head of Christ is God, and the head of man is Christ? It's all in 1 Corinthians 11.3. So... What what is that? Why did Paul even say that the head in the New Testament of woman is man? Okay, you're defining head as authority. What? Just tell me what you think it is. Source. Okay. So why did he say the source of because woman is man? Because Adam was created first, and the source of us is Christ. He said, right? But the but Adam and Eve are part of the creation of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea of a man sourcing a woman means that a man is a life giver, a man empowers. I'll give you an example. Where is the head of a river? What is the head of a river? What? Don't the, want to put you the, on the, the spot. The end? No, the head of the river is the source. It's the beginning. And that's all 1 Corinthians 11 is saying. But let's come back so, to 1 Corinthians so to, 14. Okay, because I was going to say, why, why do you think that Paul wrote that? Do you think he's just, what does that mean practically, the source? Why did Paul write? And he said, the source of us is Christ, so Christ gives to us, and the source of Jesus is God. So God gives to Jesus, but they're equal in value, we right. know. No, that's a, that's a great point. But there seem to be different well, roles you, that Jesus took. When you say they're equal in value, let me ask you a question. There's a, there's a false doctrine that was condemned as heresy years ago called the eternal subordination of the Son. Mm -hmm. it was, it was Meaning he's forever? Subordinate to the authority of the Father. And Could he do that willfully? Yeah, Abraham, I don't believe... Of his own free will? I he sits at the right hand of the Father. I understand. I don't believe that that is even a biblical or scriptural doctrine, but it is used by people today to say that a woman is eternally subordinate to a man. But but wait, why why is that unbiblical if Jesus chooses to take that role and sits at the right hand? So it's not saying I have little spiritual muscles and God the Father has big spiritual muscles, but they're equal, but he chooses to Th that's submit That's exactly himself. what it's saying. That God has big spiritual muscles, the Son has that's little spiritual this, muscles. Where do you see that in Scripture? No, I'm saying that's what is said today. So then the man has big spiritual they muscles. They don't say that. I've never heard that. Oh, my word. Well, it, see, see, wait, can you, can you agree with this? Just because somebody is spiritually abusive and they are arrogant, prideful, and uh, look over and treat a woman like a doormat— that doesn't mean that everybody who's no, a no, complementarian who sees no, that there's different no, roles, no, 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 no. because that is sinful but, if somebody but is. Abraham, if there's a woman in our church with the gift of teaching or the there, gift of prophecy, there's opportunities. They teach. Yeah, right. But what I'm saying is not in every church. Okay. Because 
what a man will say is, I've got the big spiritual muscles. You got the little spiritual muscles. Be quiet. Be silent. Paul yeah. says in 1 Corinthians 14, be quiet. Speak at home. Ask your husband because men have the muscles and women don't. Yeah. I'm saying that is totally contrary to the teaching of Scripture. But now we got to come to 1 Corinthians 14, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, I, I do, again, feel like 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is trying to establish order. You said that. Can I give you a, and a can I give you a little thought? So in women being silent, I feel like he's just helping. And we don't know in any time you read the scripture, we don't have necessarily Paul's commentary. We have to use other scriptures, which I think even first Timothy two speaks about Paul says, I don't allow women to have authority over men, I think. I think he's using a universal principle to say, hey, oh, that phrase there's, a lot go me. there's a lot going on. That and phrase kills me. You take 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 Timothy 2 and build a universal principle. No, 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 no. I just try to use scripture, just all of scripture. Well, yeah. here's the thing. Paul has just told women how they are to speak in 1 Corinthians. He's outlined how they're to speak. Then you come to 1 Corinthians 14 and he says, women, be silent. Mm -hmm. And you're correct. It says, women, be silent. Or wives. Okay, listen. In the Greek language, there are no quotation marks. But there is a little Greek particle called an eta mm -hmm. that sets off a quotation. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason 1 Corinthians 14, 34, and 35 looks as if it's contradicting everything else Paul says in Corinthians and everything else the New Testament says is because it is. Okay. It's totally opposite of what the New Testament teaches. Okay. Why? Because the eta is used to set off the quotations. The Judaizers in the city of Corinth had this prayer that the men would pray every morning. Oh, Yahweh, thank you that you did not make me a Gentile, a goyim. Thank you you did not make me a slave, and thank you you did not make me a woman. Mm -hmm. Stay home, women. Ask your husbands. Be quiet. Judaizers who had come into the church because they had begun to follow Christ were taking this view of women from Judaism. And Paul is saying, who do you think you are? Okay. Do you think you alone have received the word of God? And then he quotes what they say. So you're saying that Paul is using a secular quote from Judaism. A religious quote. A religious quote and inserting it in the Bible, one in which I have studied countless of commentaries. I have never seen that view. Every translation of the English Bible doesn't have that view. I'm not saying you're wrong, but you're the only person I've heard with that view of Scripture. Well, and I tell you, you haven't read very much because some of the finest Greek scholars that live today and write point out the Edda that's there. And, 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 and here's the deal. But why don't they put that in the translations? Well, but, but Abraham, as you, Any know, of the translations. as you know, my friend, I can cooperate with any pastor, any church who thinks that I am wrong on this issue of women serving based upon their character, their gifting, and their calling. Mm -hmm. I can fellowship with anybody. Mm -hmm. The problem is people who disagree with me elevate this to a second tier order of doctrine and say, if you believe that, I will not fellowship with you. That's yeah. a mistake. Yeah, I, I don't each, feel like this I know is a primary. No, I, I think know loving don't. people... I mean, I'm excited. Marissa's going to be speaking yeah, Mother's Sarah Day. Yeah, Sarah Harrion. Sarah uh, Harrion she knocked, so she knocked it out of the park. I do not feel like women don't have the gift. I know you don't. And, and teaching, I, I just, as I go down this line, how far do I take it? I don't think I'm at this point to where I feel like there is no roles, but we're just all equal. I think we're equal in value, equal in worth, but I do think God has well, made I think, male and female. I think there's, I think there's roles. Okay. A teacher teaches. Well, I'm in and roles with male and a female. A prophesying, gifted person prophesies. An encourager encourages. And, and if someone is considers their home, if they feel like they are the spiritual leader, if they do, based on Ephesians 5, if a man is to love his wife as Christ loved the church, with that is a Ab huge task. Oh, my word, Abraham. I can I love you. I can tell you grew up in an environment where it was always the man's got authority, the man leads, the man. Listen to so, me. So, so let me. Ephesians 5 says, husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that a wife is to love her husband? Of course. Okay, in Ephesians 5 verse 25, it says husbands and wives, there is to be mutual submission yeah. to one another. But, but why do you think Paul said that? Why do you think he said, said for women to respect 
and for men to love. Why do you think he highlighted that? I think he senses there's a need in women that we all universally have, but men laying down your life for your wife, you need to focus on this and women, which men in that culture obviously was the breadwinner. You could say worked. I mean, that's how God, God set up it's, women it's, to have babies. It's, it's mutual love, I, mutual submission. Of, of course. Oh, yes. I do believe I'm supposed to submit to that's my what, wife. That's I do. what Paul is saying. But I submit in the form of laying down my life, loving her. And I don't know as far as it goes, like, you know, um, is she supposed to wash the dishes? That's silly. I, I don't think Scripture is saying things like that. I think people try to find that in Scripture and they wrongly interpret it. But I do feel the scripture says there's different roles. In 1 Corinthians 14, I just feel like Paul was just using this as an example of just saying, hey, women, and women weren't educated in that day, and that could have been the case, as they can be today, I, don't I heard. Un- Abe, I don't understand what you're saying. So I feel like Paul was just using a universal principle that he What's quoted the in 1 Corinthians 11, 3. What's the principle? The head of woman is man. The head of Christ is head, God. What does the head mean? I think it means authority. I. Uh, I wrote or, a, or submission. I'm with you. I wrote a book. I don't think it just means source. I there, wrote a there's, book called there's fr- some... Fraudulent Authority. Mm-hmm. And I believe any male, Abraham, that takes authority over a woman. What does that mean, authority? Does that mean spiritual abuse? No, it means somebody saying, I'm the leader and you're the follower. Say, don't, wait, I don't say that to my wife. Well, we're called to lay down our lives. But, but, but what's authority then? See, wait, this, this is the same question that somebody would ask what we did a few weeks ago. What does God require me to be saved? People want to pin you in a corner. I don't have every single detail. The scripture doesn't speak like that. I think it's just a universal principle that you would even agree. Countless of Christians have held to that through the centuries. I'm not saying every Christian, but wouldn't you agree? I, and, think, I think abuse comes from a desire for authority. I didn't say a desire, but I'm saying with the scripture, what we feel like teaches. I don't like believe teaches. the scripture says okay. that a man has authority. Christ alone has authority. Yeah. So here's what I say. Yeah, and even the man that has authority, he doesn't have authority in and of himself. His authority is 100% Boom. from God. Boom. And it's like God establishing as he sets his team, hey, I Boom. want you to do this position, I want you to do this position, so as, this role, this as role. as he sets his team. Children have a different role in the se- home. As he sets his team. Does he set his team based upon giftedness? Does a defensive end play defensive end like you did because you're gifted? As he sets his team. I'm saying it's based on giftedness, and gifts are never rendered by gender. So gifts are given, and then the body listens to the head Christ. So you would say people who hold the complementarian view, they are not reading the Bible correctly. I don't understand. Women and men okay. complement each other. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, if they believe there's roles, like no, no, men and women have different roles. There are different roles based upon gifts. Here. Okay, okay, so, all right, so you do believe in roles, but we're just saying the gifts. roles are just gifts. Now, if a woman is gifted to do the finances, let her do the finances. Do, do you believe, I know I don't want to get off track too much, but some of the women that we might even come speak at our church, do you think they believe they're to be lead pastors? If God called them, if they had the gift of teaching? Abraham. Because there's the, a lot the, of women who don't believe con- that, and the, they speak the everywhere. The concept of lead pastor is completely unbiblical. Why do we do that then? Because we do a bunch of unbiblical things. Why? I said, why do we do that? That's what culture does. No, I, not, not culture. Why do we? The church? No, Emmanuel. Take it away. <laughs> Wait. I okay. take it away. Even though the term lead pastor, which I think was more elder-led, you would agree, in the Bible, right? There was... There was people that would help govern and make decisions with the church. Men and women. Lydia. Elder only means older, mature. Lydia was a leader of her church. You mean in Philippi? Yes. The Bible says that. Hang on. You asked the but question. But she allowed a church in her home, but was she necessarily selected as an elder maybe? <laughs> You go back to authority. I'm saying if you're not asking the question of authority, there's not, a very, there's not a question. Listen, you ask, why do we have a lead pastor? Yeah. Okay. We do a bunch of stuff. We're incorporated by the state of Oklahoma. The, the no church in the New Testament was incorporated. That All that means is a, we listen to the state. The state requires somebody to have ordination papers. The state requires that. 
So we got to do what the state says. Okay. Okay. So a lead pastor in an incorporated nonprofit facility has some responsibility, but it's not so biblical. It's not, it's not biblical. So the church is ultimately governed by laws through the scriptures. If you tore down this building, you took away our yeah. 501c3 nonprofit status and all that, the church would still exist, yeah. but it wouldn't be a manual Enid. Yeah. It would just be men and women out there doing their thing, gifted. So, but in Paul's day, do you, he, you believe he chose elders that you believe were men and women yes. to help lead the church? Just like we do. We have men and women, Ann Abernathy in our church. Mm -hmm. She's an older, sorry, Ann, an older, <laughs> more mature elder yeah. who leads and guides the chairperson of our leadership team. Yeah. Carol, she's a female. And, and again, I do believe it's a secondary issue because I could be uh, wrong, right. but as of now, I do believe that if I had to make a choice, I do feel like elders or lead pastors and I wouldn't even call lead pastors, people who are primarily the shepherd and speaking God's word into the entire assembly on a consistent basis. It happened three Sundays ago, and Sarah Harrier knocked it no, out. No, I said on a consistent basis, like they are seen as the sh the main shepherd of the church, because I think, I think that's Timothy just, was that's, a shepherd that's of the- just ridiculous. If you had a woman gifted with prophecy and she's a daughter and she did it consistently, it's consistent with Acts 2.17. In the latter days, my spirit will be poured forth and your sons and daughters will prophesy. So so as we wrap it up, your <laughs> thoughts on 1 Corinthians 14, and I'm not crying, my eyes are watering. Your thoughts on 1 Corinthians 14, which- and, and I didn't mean that it's not true, Wade. I just haven't read that. And you're right. When I say countless of commentaries, I probably have looked at seven or eight. I don't know every commentary. But you just believe Paul was using a Judaism quote mm -hmm. in that day that was demeaning women, mm -hmm. and he inserted it into 1 Corinthians 14. To, di to disprove it. To di and, and you look at but what comes to before that. To disprove the false quote. Women, you speak. You prophesy. You do as gifted. Now, some of you come in here and say, you're Jewish, and the word only has come to you because you're God's chosen people. And you say, women, be silent. Go home and ask your husbands. Don't talk. Don't even speak. Psst, psst. That's, that's the etta. Psst. And then he disproves it. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, I. <laughs> this is fun. I like it. Okay, okay. Um, next time, I do need to be more prepared, Wade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me but, tell you something. Hey, the reason I think people love our podcast, you're so transparent. You're so open. You're so kind. This is what we do in the office. We're just letting you in on it. And and I want to say yeah. one final thing. I know we've gone over. Good night, eh? It's like, it's like you preaching on Sunday morning. So, say, I, listen, I love this guy. We fellowship, we cooperate. I know I could be wrong. I don't believe I am. I would say to you, Abe. And I know I could be wrong. I, I'm I, genuinely I, not just saying I it know. because you said I, that. I, I know. I, I, I just wrestle, and so, I'm trying to yeah, make sense did. of it. I will say this. Uh, I grew up in a setting where only men led, where it was said, men, you got the muscles, the spiritual muscles. You lead women, you be quiet and be mm. submissive. And I'm telling you, uh, Abe, I'm going to offend some folks here, but... Churches rail against homosexual marriages, and when you have only men leading, it's like you have a homosexual church. Oh. When we, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, when we change a homosexual church, yeah, if we, be, oh, okay, I, we, I, we I, can't. I, get I, into no, it. we can't. Uh, but you've got same-sex leadership, and I believe the New Testament speaks of shared leadership. Jesus Christ taught that. But you know, Acts someone two. who believes in roles, they're not saying women have no role. Yeah, we're in getting the church. Let, let me just say yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. So. What, what I'm saying is when we move to shared leadership, it's the best thing that's ever happened to our church. The ladies have saved us because of their giftings from making some incredibly stupid mistakes. I believe, Abe, when you shut out half the body of Jesus Christ, hmm. I think you set yourself up for failure. Hmm. So thank you for being a friend and yeah. person. Okay. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Be sure and send in your questions to wabequestions at gmail.com. Look forward to dialoguing with you next time. P pick an easier question next time, will you? <laughs> yeah.